Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, our Truth Skin Health products, if you have a a problem patient or a loved one who's dealing with a health challenge, if you want to wean yourself or a loved one off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, likewise, we'd love to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and, uh, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or critical healthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. You can earn thank you checks associated with helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can have all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or acne blemishes, or you want to prevent hyperpigmentation or prevent accelerated aging of the skin, retinol is your go-to topical active ingredient. It is, along with vitamin C, one of the two most important. It is one of the two most important active materials for the skin. If you're not using retinol and you're not using fat-soluble, stabilized vitamin C on your your skin on a regular basis, you are truly missing the boat on anti-aging skin care. And you need good doses as well, and that's why we put 5% retinol in our Truth Retinol 5% gel, 25% vitamin C, 68% vitamin C, 70% vitamin C. All our, all our uh, truth treatment products are absolutely packed with vitamin C, as well as retinol, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, our number today, 844-236-6010. We've got a guest at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk to Michael McAvoy, who is the founder of Metabolic Healing. He is a clinician, he's an author, and he is also the developer of what he calls the Definitive Consumer Education Course on Genetics. And it is really, it's got a lot of good stuff. If, you're, if you've ever been confused about genetics or you're confused about the 23andMe or you want to know about uh, how you can use supplements effectively to control or to modify genetics epigenetically, 
Michael's program, Metabolic Healing, is definitely something that you want to look into. We're going to talk to Michael about epigenetics and genetics and about his uh, consumer education course in genetics at the bottom of the hour. So if you have questions or comments and you want to give us a call, we'll get your calls here in our next segment at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. So we've been talking about the nature of vibration and the relationship of vibration to health. Vibration throughout history has been regarded as as the fundamental aspect of reality, the fundamental aspect of creation. This is what the Bible means when it says that in the beginning there was the Word. The Word is a metaphor for vibration. Logos. God is called the Logos. Logos means the Word. And the Word is, can be thought of as a type of vibration. A Word is a type of vibration. Scientists today talk about something called string theory. String theory is the modern version of the Bible's word theory. The Bible says that creation began with the word. Physicists say that creation began with strings. Strings are little words. That's basically what they are. You can think of a, a string as a, a fundamental unit of vibration. String theory is word theory. I call it word theory, and it gives rise to creation. That's the physics. That's the uh, physics perspective of what the Bible says. In the beginning, there was the string. The Bible says in the beginning, there was the word. Physicists say in the beginning, there was the string. One of the most obvious ways, one of the most prominent ways that vibration show up, even if we don't often think of it that way, is color. The seven colors, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You probably heard the term Roy G. Biv. All the colors are just light. They're just vibrating light. And the only difference between colors from a physics sense is how fast they vibrate, how fast they make the electrons in our eye vibrate. So light vibrates in a certain way, and, and the uh, electrons in our eye vibrate in response to that. And when I say vibrate, I am talking ridiculously fast vibrations. Red for example, vibrates at around 400 trillion times a second. The light that makes up red, red light, vibrates at 400 trillion times a second. How can that? It's inconceivable. Yellow vibrates at 500 trillion times a second. Blue, 600 trillion times a second. The only difference between blue and yellow is the rate of vibration. The only difference between any color is how fast that color, how fast the light that's carrying that color is vibrating. If it vibrates faster, we see uh, green. If it vibrates slower, we see red. So given this fundamental nature, the fundamental relationship of vibration and its relationship to all of creation, vibration equals creation, it should come as no surprise that the health of any organized system, any living system, including our living system, the biological system that we call the human body, is fundamentally related to vibration. In the body, nutrition, relaxation, breathing correctly, all the strategies that we talk about, that make up what I call the bright side philosophy of health. They're about vibration, or more accurately, the smooth flow of vibration. We call that coherence. Health is coherent vibration. Yesterday, we said that the difference between coherence and incoherence, or one of the differences between incoherence and, and coherence, is like the difference between a laser and a light bulb. A laser's light energy is organized. It's coherent. It gives it great power. The coherence makes it powerful. You can do surgery with lasers. You can eliminate cancer tumors with lasers. You can drill through teeth and play CDs and read barcodes with lasers. Lasers can be so powerful that they have military applications. The Air Force is working with lasers to shoot down enemy planes and ballistic missiles. That's what the whole Ronald Reagan strategic defense initiative, the Star Wars initiative, so-called Star Wars initiative, is about. He proposed... Uh, shooting down ballistic missiles, incoming missiles with lasers. They already have it. It's already come to fruition, at least experimentally. I was just reading uh, on CNN, uh, the Air Force by 2020 will be mounting lasers on fighter planes. How unbelievable is that? You're going to have fighter planes with lasers, shooting lasers, a whole new level of mil military technology that is going to make ordinary weapons obsolete. On the other hand, no one is going to be shooting down any enemy planes or any, a, anybody's enemy missiles with light bulbs, no matter how bright the light bulbs are. That's because unlike the coherent energy coming from a laser, the light bulb's energy is incoherent. It's scattered. It's disorganized. It's chaotic. You can only use a light bulb to, to read with or to, to see with. You're not, going to use, you're not going to do anything constructively with a light bulb. Nutrition and what is sometimes called derisively alternative medicine is about coherence. Drugs and surgeries, they're about chaos. Drugs and surgeries and all the weapons of the medical model, all the tools of the medical model, they're like light bulbs. Nutrition is like a laser. 
Diet is like a laser. Exercise is like a laser. This is what alternative medicine is. It's coherent vibration, coherent health energy. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 236 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. we got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Michael McAvoy, who is going to be talking about his uh, consumer education course on genetics. It's uh, self-care. It's called Self-Care Genetics and Your Health Understanding Your Genetic Test Results. It's a super cool course. Uh, Michael is a clinician. He's an author. And he's put together this program. We'll be talking about it. His website, by the way, is called is uh, Meta- metaboloshealing.com. If you're interested in checking it out, we'll talk to Michael at the bottom of the hour, and we'll get your calls here. Uh, we'll get your calls right now. Actually, we got a whole bunch of people who want to talk to us. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's welcome Chris from Texas to the bright side. Good morning, Chris. Hi. I hope you can hear me okay. Hear you loud and clear. What's going on, my man? Well, uh, at first I was going to talk to you about Zimbalta because uh, I met somebody. They, they were giving me their horror story about that. But uh, actually, on a positive note, I came across uh, – this is actually some stuff that I found good deals on that I've had positive results from. Uh, uh, I bought a uh, resveratrol supplement okay. uh-huh. and then a uh, – Collagen. It says U uh, theory collagen type two. Uh, okay. Got a really good deal on on those two things, and I've had positive results. So that's awesome. Um, collagen is great stuff. Can, type two I, collagen. I I can hang up, but w- what I want to hear though is uh, uh, tell tell me and tell us what you know the negatives and the positives first. The negatives about Zimbalta. On Zimbalta, there isn't a lot of positive. Uh, uh, you know, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> you know, as a drug, as a chemist, as somebody who works with medicine, there's nothing good about Zimbalta. From a patient standpoint, you know, if you're depressed, and depression's kind of interesting. I've never really been seriously depressed, so I can't speak to it personally. I've seen, I've known a lot of people, seen a lot of people who've been depressed. And you know what, Chris? If you're really depressed and you get a pill that even, even if it just numbs you out, at least you're not depressed, right? So I'm not no, going to well, put. Well, it's not me. It's 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 well, not me. I'm not me. talking about I'm you. Not the one who I'm talking changes. generically. I'm talking generically. I mean, I meant you generically. I didn't mean you personally. So if a person is depressed, right? And who am I, from a far, as a as a chemist or as a pharmacist who knows about the medicine, who am I to say that it's not something that you want to take? If it if now you're not depressed, even if you're just numb, and that's what these drugs tend to do, is they kind of numb you out. So at least you know you may not have joy, you may not be ecstatic, but at least you're not depressed. I don't like being in the position of saying to somebody not to not to not be depressed. So I can tell you that Cymbalta, Prozac, Effexor, Zocor, these are horrible drugs. And whether they work or not is up for debate, at least in terms of whether they actually work. They may work as a placebo. And uh, uh, there's a guy named Irvin, Irwin Kirsch who wrote a book called The Emperor's New Drugs. And in that book he talks about, he actually he does um, a meta-analysis. He studies other studies. He puts, I think he studies 700 studies on these drugs. And what he showed was that most of their effects are placebo. But nonetheless, if you take Cymbalta, you take Prozac, and all of a sudden you're not depressed anymore, I'm not going to put myself in a position of saying you shouldn't do that. On the other hand, the toxicity associated with taking any drug is not up for debate. You cannot take, we're going to talk about this a little bit tomorrow, you cannot take a drug and not have toxicity or side effects even if you know it. A drug is cleared out of the body immediately because the body doesn't want that. The body regards a drug as a poison. It regards a drug as the enemy. It regards the drug as something that needs to be eliminated quickly. This is why uh, uh, when you take a prescription drug, when they have a recommended dose for a prescription drug, that recommended dose accounts for the rapid elimination of the drug. It's called first pass effect. In other words, you take a prescription drug and the liver clears it out immediately. And so the drug companies know this and they have to raise the dose so you get an effective dose. Otherwise, the body would eliminate it quickly, you wouldn't even feel the medicine because the body doesn't want drugs. 
it thinks drugs are the enemy, and they are the enemy. As I was saying before we went to break, drugs create chaotic energy inside the body. Whether they have an effect or not, you know, they're going to have an effect, but it's not going to be a good effect. You may feel like you're not depressed anymore because you took your Cymbalta or you took your Prozac, but at what cost? At the cost of all kinds of nutritional deficiencies, at the cost of liver toxicity, at the cost of adverse reactions and side effects. When it comes to these kinds of serotonin reuptake inhibitors, you're talking about side effects like mood changes, behavior changes, anxiety, panic attacks, problems sleeping. These are all side effects of drugs that are supposed to treat these kind of problems. So you take your Cymbalta for your anxiety, one of the side effects is anxiety. You take your Cymbalta or Prozac or serotonin reuptake inhibitor for panic attacks, one of the problems, one of the side effects is panic attacks. You take it for depression, or one of the side effects of these drugs is suicidal thoughts. So you can't get away with taking a drug and not expect toxicity or side effects, even if you know it. And the most insidious, as I've said before, are nutritional deficiencies. There's so much more to say about this, but you know, I hope, I hope I'm not being mean, and I don't, I don't want to be mean-spirited. If somebody gets benefits from these things, more power to them, but I certainly don't recommend them. Chris, I want to get a couple more calls. I hope I helped you out, buddy. Thank you so much for, uh, for reaching out on the bright side. All right? Have a good day. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to Elaine. Oh, Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. What's up? Great. Yeah, just thanks again for how much you've helped me and has helped so many of my patients. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, just uh, real quick, you know, uh, I, I spoke to you a couple of weeks about, um, I've had this, like, uh, it's like a chronic cough, especially like after brushing my teeth and it's real flummy. My doc said it's kind of, you know, because it's white phlegm and it's... It happens out. right after you brush your teeth? That's when it's worse, like brushing... Interesting. Your... What kind yeah, of tooth... So... Have you changed your toothpaste around? Yeah, cha- so I took out the sulfate and the toothpaste. That got better. Fluoride okay. free, better. Okay. Then I went and bought, um, like, a super mega water filter to get out the fluoride. Okay. A Pro-Pure filter and... Fluoride's a huge problem. And fluoridated it's... toothpaste is ridiculous. How the heck can fluoride toothpaste work to make your teeth stronger? I, I never understood this. So the, when you brush your teeth, somehow the fluoride is supposed to patch up the holes in your, or stay, you rinse out the fluoride. How's it staying on your teeth? Right. And by the way, fluoride is a, a deadly toxin, and you can't tell me that you're not, drink, you're not swallowing fluoride when you brush your teeth. And if you do it your whole life, you're getting significant right. amounts of fluoride. Fluoride is especially problematic for the brain. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. So taking out the fluoride toothpaste, taking out the fluoride in the water or with this filter, whatever, it's been about three weeks. Made a difference? It, it's like night and day. Oh, that's awesome. That's I'll awesome. Believe, what what kind of know. filter? What kind of filter did you get? It's that Pro Pure brand. Uh, it's okay. Giant. I guess it's ceramic. I'm not quite sure. Um, the water tastes so good. Our oh, that's water, awesome. Alaska water is really good, but the city ruins it with the chlorine and the fluoride. Uh-huh. Does it get so, the chlorine out, too? Yeah, everything. Oh, that's awesome. It's called a Pro-Pure filter? Yeah, Pro-Pure. Yeah, it Do you is. see any crap on the filter after, after a week Tons. or two? Tons. I've been using it about three weeks, and it's like, oh, look at this filter. Oh, my God. And that's the stuff you were drinking? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. How about well, distilled I'm, water? Have you tried distilled water? Does it, does it taste similar to distilled water? Or? You know, I've never tasted, I've worked with it in chemistry, but I've never really tasted distilled water. That's the only kind of water I drink personally is distilled water, or mostly. You know, if I'm in a restaurant or something, I end up drinking tap water probably, but I try to stick with distilled water personally. Water water is very serious business. And the whole idea of fluoride and chlorine, you can't tell me that's not affecting our health negatively. Hey, Elaine, that's the music. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. Hey, I had a question. Did you have a question? For my daughter, is it okay to give her non-fluoride water? Of course. Oh, your baby? She's 12. Okay, of course. You don't need fluoride in your water. Okay. You don't, you don't need to have fluoride in the water. Stay away from the sugar. That's the big problem. Okay. All right. Thanks, Elaine. we got to go. Okay. That's the music. Time to hit the break. We'll come back with Michael McAvoy in our next segment. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Did you know children... Okay. We are back on 
the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com. Also, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Help me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program for a one-time $25 fee. You can become a distributor. Check, them, uh, check out all the information and all the longevity products at truth treat, at uh, sorry bravesideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can check out our truth skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so I am very, very happy to have our next guest on, Michael McAvoy. He's the founder of Metabolic Healing. He's a clinician, a super bright guy, educator, teacher, and he's also created something he calls the Definitive Consumer Education Course on Genetics. His website is metabolichealing.com. We're going to talk some genetics and uh, talk a little bit about 23andMe and how to read 23 23 and me. Uh, also, maybe we'll get to some stuff about the MTHFR stuff, the gene mutations and uh, the uh, methyl the uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase um, uh, deficiency uh, gene mutation. Well, maybe we'll get to talk about that later on here. Thanks for joining us, Michael. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good, Ben. Thanks for having me. I'm doing really well. So, uh, you would you call yourself a geneticist? Absolutely not. Um, okay. But I, I definitely have an interest in genetics from a clinical perspective because, let's face it, the world is now bombarded with genetics information and information about genetics. And misinformation and, and disinformation. And, and a, lot of, a lot of misinformation and a lot of it, we need to really kind of you know, cut away a lot of the noise to really get to what the meat is and what's really important. What, what exactly is the problem, in your opinion, what is the problem with the genetic theory, the genetic dogma, or, or the central dogma, they call it? Have you heard that phrase, the central dogma? The yeah, idea I mean, that the, the, the central dogma, I mean, it's, it's basically based on a lot of what I call the rush, R-U-S-H. And essentially what that means is that there's been a huge rush to push genetics research forward. And while that's all sounds good, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with creating an enormous amount of research on a particular subject. You have to understand the limitations of how that research gets processed and realizing that we're really at just the beginning stages, still only 50, 60 years in any significant genetics research. We're still in the infantile stages of understanding what really genetics is all about. And so a lot of it has to do with the kinds of studies that have been done have been primarily population-based studies, which, you know, study the, the associations b between certain diseases and genetics. But as we know, Ben, as associations with diseases is not necessarily the same thing as causation. Right. Okay. Correlation is not causation, as, as they say. So is that how you see, is that the major problem you see with genetics? Because it seems to me like it's so simple. Oh, I got the gene for breast cancer. I should just get rid of my breasts. Or, you know, I've got the gene for cancer, so now I have to really be careful. What's wrong with that idea that there's, that there's, a, gene for the, there's a gene for a problem, so now I can take a, a pro, preemptive, uh, make a preemptive strike against my genetic tendency? Is that a problem? Well, it can definitely be a problem, Ben. And, and, the, and the main problem is that, with all of this research and looking at these associations, we are failing to understand what really is going on from the genetics perspective. And so, you know, there are certain things that are known as genetic diseases, and these are actually very rare, and they're usually identified in the first few years of somebody's life. And medicine is, is pretty darn good of identifying many of these really rare genetic diseases. But then there's everybody else that all of this research is, is trying to suss out who's got what risk factors. But the big thing that's being ignored, and it's still being ignored today, is that your gene status, and this is a key point, your genetic status is not necessarily the same thing as your genetic expression. Is this where epigenetics so comes from? Is this the idea of epigenetics? This is the idea of what's called epigenetics, which has now become a major focus in scientific research because scientists have discovered that there are many variables and many factors that are influencing how our genes are being expressed, which don't have anything to hmm. do with the actual status of the gene itself. So just because you have a gene doesn't mean it's going to get expressed. 
That's right. And we have these different switches that turn genes, their expression on and off. And a lot of this wasn't known about 30, 40 years ago. Now the research is starting to really focus on these important factors. That's funny you say that because I went to pharmacy school. I, I graduated in 1986, so what are we talking, like 30, 31 years ago or so. And we learned about epigenetics in pharmacy school. And I was always amazed when I got out of pharmacy school how nobody talked about it. How every, Everybody was obsessed with genetics, but I knew from pharmacy school that, that we learned that there were nutrients that were epigenetic factors, the B vitamins. And, and you probably know, you know, obviously methylation and acetylation. And there were various compounds that were found in foods that could turn genes on and off. And I was always amazed until I, until I started started hearing from Dr. Wallach, actually, that nobody was talking about this whole idea of epigenetics. Today, though, as you point out, more and more, we're beginning to recognize that epigenetics is a very real thing. I don't know if you go, ever go browse around Barnes & Noble or, or bookstores, but there's so many books on epigenetics now. Yeah, there's, there really is a huge focus and shift towards the understanding of how these genes are being expressed and what we can do to modify our gene expression. And it's actually profoundly simple when it comes down to it. So just because you have the BRAC gene, the BR, whatever, the BRCA gene, doesn't mean you need to have your breast taken off. Is that what you're telling me? Well, and, and not only that, Ben, but we actually now can look at good studies that show just in the instance of the breast cancer gene, or they now call it BRCA1 and 2, which many people, let's be honest, it's, it's something that everyone is concerned with now, especially women, because the incidence of breast cancer is very high. But we now know of therapeutic compounds and supplemental compounds that have been shown to modulate that gene through epigenetic mechanisms. Namely, for example, cruciferous vegetables and mm. particular compounds that are derived isothiocyanates and diindoleal methane and indole free carbonyls, these have been found to modify the actual BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. That's Basically, substance, substances found in broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower cabbage, etc. That's right, yeah. That's awesome. There's actually, you can get DIM and I3C as a supplement now. You probably know that. Yes, indeed. And, and, and so that, these are, the, looking at nutrition and looking at dietary factors as well as toxins in the environment, which largely gets ignored when you're mm. talking about genetics, but it's so critical. So those are negative, toxins, negative toxins, epigenetics. Toxins to have a definite negative epigenetic effect on our gene expression. No that's, that's basically how they work. You know, epigenetics is a fancy word, but basically we're just talking about either support or toxicity, right? It's pretty simple when it comes down to it. It's, it's either that when, when you're talking about epigenetics, you're talking about ways to improve gene expression or ways to inhibit gene expression. Mm -hmm. And that could be good or bad, depending. So, so you don't you, want certain genes to express, but you want other genes to express in the right way. So you motivated to actually teach people how to, how to understand all this stuff. So what I spend a lot of my time doing, Ben, is I do a lot of research. And not only that, but I am a clinician. So I, I actually do look at genetics information, and many people now know that they can get gene sequence through direct-to-consumer companies like 23andMe. And I so definitely want to talk about, we got to take a break, Michael, but that's, I definitely want to talk about 23andMe because I'm sometimes, somewhat skeptical about that. I got a couple questions about it. So hang on through the break and then we'll get back. We'll talk about 23andMe and then we'll talk about your, uh, your consumer education course on genetics, which looks super interesting. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Michael McAvoy and uh, his website is metabolichealing.com. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Michael McAvoy. Website is metabolichealing.com, and we're talking about his program he calls the Definitive Consumer Education Course on Genetics. Michael, so I've been seeing all these commercials about 23andMe. What's the scoop? Is it real? Does it work? Is it something we need to be careful with? Well, there's definitely been a craze. There's no doubt about it. And over the last five, six, seven years, this direct-to-consumer company 23andMe has pushed forward a, a way for anybody to basically get genetics testing done. And they give you results based upon your genes that will give you, you know, percentage disease risk for so-and-so disease. Now, I have a lot of problems with that particular model, but there still could be a lot of interesting and potentially important information that you can use and extract when you actually get your 23andMe results. 
And so what I've done is over the last several years, I've spent a lot of time doing a lot of different research on different genes and trying to figure out, well, how is this information actually useful? And unfortunately, there's a lot of limitations with genetic testing, but there also can be some ways of using genetic test information that could be useful from a clinical standpoint. So while I'm less concerned with understanding a person's disease risk, and the accuracy of that is certainly questionable as it is, I'm more interested in understanding what genes may be causing a problem and how can I understand what they are so I can help more people. And this is where your course comes in. This is where my course comes in, and it's, it's a compilation of many years of research that I've done. My clinical partner, Julie Donaldson, is also involved in the course, and we give case studies, as well as we give away a lot of really important takeaway information that you get when you get the course. We, get, we give you certain uh, cheat, cheat, what we call cheat sheets. So we look at ways to help improve a person's mood and behavior through neurotransmitter balancing, through hormone balancing, and even discussing factors that influence autoimmune diseases. So we look at genes, but we also look at factors that influence the expression of those genes and what we can really do from a practical, simple standpoint. Now, from a, just speaking logistics-wise, what do, if somebody's interested, what do they have to do? First of all, what do they have to do? How much does it cost? And then what, are, what can they expect to get out of it specifically? So the, the course is $99, and they go to metabolichealing.com forward slash Ben. And the takeaway from the course is basically there's three major things. First of all, when you take this course, you're going to have a greater understanding of genetics. You're no longer going to be afraid of genetics, and you're no longer going to feeling, feel like you're being misled or confused. You'll have a much stronger understanding of what the strengths and limitations are of genes and genetics in general. Number two, you're going to have a lot of takeaway material. As I mentioned, we're going to, you're going to learn about things that are going to – foods and supplements that are going to actually help you – to modulate and control your genetic expression. And we go over a list of three very common types of health conditions today, autoimmune disease, hormone balancing, and neurotransmitter balancing, which is basically your mood and behavior. Number three, you're gonna learn about all of these different case studies, and you're gonna learn how we as a, as a team actually work with genetic testing from an evidence-based standpoint so that we can really get optimal results with clients. And that, it's an online video course. It's an online video course that you take at your own time, and you have your own personal login. So there's you can you basically own the course for life. Now is uh, is this for, this is uh, for lay people? I take it, but can clinicians benefit as well? Massage therapists, say acupuncturists, doctors, or people who work with patients. Absolutely, without a doubt, and it, it definitely is designed for the layperson that doesn't have any prior understanding of genetics at all, but it can also be applied to anybody that has an interest in genetics, and that includes any kind of health professionals as well. Now, how, where, does, where do ideas, kind of associated ideas like the microbiome, for example, come into play? Do you teach people about that? Do you teach people about ancillary ideas that are associated with genetics? We, we do an ex, to an extent. Um, it's important to point out that there's many things that are influencing gene expression. As Ben brought up, the microbiome, and that's certainly a fascinating and really important area of understanding and research. We absorb all of our nutrients from our gut. So they say, you know, you're, you're only as good as your absorption and your digestion. I think that's absolutely correct. How about the genetics, so, of, the genetics of the microbiome, too? The genetics of the microbiome, well, that'll definitely be the next course. Okay, because that, that plays a huge role in how, how, genes, how our genes express. The genetics of the microbiome affect our genetic material, correct? Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And, and the reality is that we are a bacterial organism primarily, number one, and all of the things that are going on are, are happening not independently from our microbial balance. In fact, our microbes play such a central role in, in gene expression and epigenetic activity. What do you tell people about things like uh, chlorine and flu uh, chlorine and water, antibiotics and water, or even uh, glyphosate uh, that kills bacteria in plants, but also can't help but kill bacteria in our bodies? What do you tell people about uh, how those kinds of factors can affect their their microbiome, their digestion, as well as uh, their genetics? 
Well, that's a very good point because chemical toxins in the environment, as we know, are so ubiquitous. They're everywhere. We're all being bombarded with a huge list of different toxins. And these things have very adverse effects on not only our gene expression, but also on our gut health. They, they put stress on our liver and internal organs of our body. And many of these chemical compounds can cause cancer. We know that. And the way that they do that is by creating damage to certain genes. And so we have to definitely, as a species, be better about detoxifying our body from these poisons and understanding what nutrients and foods will help us to do that, as well these, as how we can limit our exposure. Are these things you cover? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And then uh, we only have a couple minutes left, but I'm, I'm always hearing about this whole MTHFR thing, and I just, I, it doesn't smell right to me. What's your take on it? Well, again, first of all, explain so, to the listeners, explain a little bit about it, and then tell me your so take the on it. MTHFR is a, is a gene that converts folate into the active form, or folic acid into the active form that's used by the cells. And folate is obviously very critical for how the body works, gene expression, epigenetic factors, as we've been discussing. But just like with anything, people will think, well, there's just an easy solution. So if I have this MTHFR gene mutation, if I take this supplement, that'll fix the problem. And what we found is that actually doesn't, that doesn't actually work. So you have to go back and you have to understand, well, what's the value of genetics then if we can't really just take a simple one-on-one -on -one magic bullet solution for a gene? And so the problem is that the information can seem very complex for individuals. And so we have to provide a much more basic framework and understanding for how to actually treat people that have certain gene configurations and genes which could negatively affect them. But we have to appreciate that toxins and environmental factors can also alter the function of those genes in particular. So as it comes down to folate and MTHFR, we have to be very careful because it's not as simple as just saying, take methylfolate as a solution. That approach just doesn't necessarily work. Are these, these are all things that you'll explain in, your, uh, in the course? Yeah, we definitely talk about MTHFR extensively and methylation. And we have to say that methylation is an important component. What is methylation? Tell, methylation? tell us a little bit about that. Methylation is a, is a biochemical process that's happening in every cell of your body millions of times a second, billions of times a second. And it's basically the shuttling of a very simple um, molecule, a methyl group, to and from different molecules. And so the importance of methylation is that it can affect so many different things that are going on, including your Genetics. gene expression, uh, your DNA expression. Yeah, absolutely. DNA methylation, for example, is a key way that our genes are being expressed or suppressed. And so methylation plays a central role and also in other things, too, like heart health, cardiovascular health, mm. brain health. Homocysteine, the whole homocysteine thing. The whole homocysteine thing. Many people remember about cardiovascular disease, but they realize oh, everyone's so concerned about cholesterol, but they forget about all of these other independent risk factors like elevations in homocysteine. If you've got elevations in homocysteine, you've got some problem with your methylation cycle, and that's an independent risk factor of cardiovascular disease. Known about that for 20, 25 years now. The, the reality is that we could take certain supplements that lower homocysteine levels by improving methylation. So if somebody is interested in learning about homocysteine, they got a heart health problem, or maybe they have a child who has a genetic disorder, or genetic disease, or what they call a genetic disease, or uh, perhaps a MTHFR deficiency, these are all patients or people who would benefit from this, uh, this course of yours? Absolutely. That's who we did this course for. That is awesome. And, and they need no background in science, or they don't have to be technologically advanced or anything like that. They don't know anything about genetics or even health. Nope. That's, That's right. That's awesome. All right. Give the website out again real quick, Michael. So it's metabolichealing.com forward slash Ben, B-E-N. To get the course, it's 99 bucks. It'll be a great way for you to get educated on genetics, the limitations, and strengths and values. Awesome, Michael. You got a great blog up there, too. I was loving it this morning. Thanks. Thank you so much, Michael, for uh, joining us on the Bright Side. I'll be talking to you a little bit later. Okay, buddy? Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Have a great day. That's Michael McAvoy, website metabolichealing.com slash Ben, forward slash Ben, if you want to purchase his metabolic healing, his, uh, his uh, uh, home course, cons the Definitive Consumer Education course on genetics. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.